Welcome to the True Crime, True Crime uh, Rich Vertigo Show. Tonight's true crime case took place here in Texas. It is a case of severe domestic abuse, severe domestic violence. The, the lady who's appearing anonymously on the show tonight uh, is lucky to be alive uh, as her abuser was violently and viciously savage. With, with his brutality. Uh, this went on for a period of some three years, from 2016 to 2019. Uh, tell me, uh, how did you first meet him, and when and how did the abuse first begin? I met him. He used to be my, my husband, uh, passed away, and he was my dead husband's best friend. And I used to see how he would treat the, his girlfriends, Pam Rome and all that. And when my husband passed away, then me and him got close. And I wanted to be pampered like that. Like any girl would want to be pampered. Exactly. When and, and, and how early on in the relationship did the, the physical abuse begin? The, within the first two weeks, he slapped me across the face. And he told me then that I should leave since he slapped me. But again, I had known him for actually 10 years before because he was my dead husband's best friend. I had never saw any um, indications that he was an abuser. Um, so I thought that was an isolated incident. And I've told him that over three years because he's like, well, boy, if you thought I was an abuser, why didn't you leave me then? And I said, because I thought that was an isolated incident, but I was so wrong. It got so worse, so bad. Just how bad did it get exactly what were some of the things that began to happen after that first initial abuse? Well, for one, I do have epilepsy, okay? And I, um, for one night, I was in the middle of the night. Our neighbor's light was shining in the window. And at 3 o'clock in the morning, he gets up to find a hammer. When he cannot find his hammer, he accuses me of having his hammer, which I don't touch his tools. I get the bed flipped over on me, a totally wooden bed. I couldn't get out from under it. But when, I, when he pulled me out from under it, I woke up naked at two hours later on the front porch. That's, that's because he had knocked me out. Truly horrifying experience. What kept you from uh, uh, making a police report during these different incidents, or, or maybe telling friends or letting other people know what happened? What, did you basically cover for him? I did a couple times. There was a couple times that um, I, I was stabbed in my chest and stuff, and I told the um, the um, paramedics that I had a seizure and fell on my knife. And they're like, three or four times you stabbed, you fell on your knife. And I, I was like, well, I must have been flopping on it or something. Um, but after that, he had told me that if I ever called the cops, that he would kill me. And I totally believe that. Wow. Uh, you, you had mentioned an incident involving his own mother. Tell me about that. His mother has all had Alzheimer's. I'm sorry, she has passed away now. His mother had Alzheimer's, and his dad needed a break because his dad took care of his mom. Well, my ex asked his dad to ha have his mom come over and let us watch him. Well, during this, his mom couldn't go to the bathroom by herself, or she peed on herself or something. He continuously to beat his mother. When I said something about it, he turned around and said something. You want it? Say something else and you will get it. So, it might, and I hate this really bad because I went ahead and let him beat his Alzheimer's mother because she couldn't remember it instead of me. But when he told his dad that she fell because of bruises. I did pull his dad around, and I said, please, no, she didn't fall. He caught, gave those bruises to her, and his dad thought he knew that.
Wow, wow. Well, how did this finally end? How did you finally get away from this man or get him out of your life? When I was, when the last time incident, he had choked me on in a vehicle all the way home. He wasn't going to let me call the cops. When I begged him to let me call an ambulance, he finally let me have my phone. And while I was on the phone with the ambulance, he took the phone away from me about three or four times, pulled out a sword, tried to stab me. So instead of sending an ambulance, they sent two cops and arrested him. Wow. So basically that's when his extreme violent behavior with a deadly weapon, I might add, came to the light of law enforcement authorities. Yes, plus um, um, interfering with a 911 call, yes sir. Now did he in fact uh, catch a charge from that and get prosecuted? He did, but uh, uh, at the time he was he's on parole. And um, it took, he sat in county 10 months, and the parole hearing, um, we were going to go for the parole hearing, and because of what he turned around and said, he was trying to put it all on me that I was beating his mother, because he looked at me and was like, well, do you remember being on my mother? And I said, you mean when you knocked me on her? That's what got him sent off. Mm -hmm. He was right there, and now he's... They said he's got a year and 24 days. He's done 10 months, so he's looking at two months. In a few days, he will be out on a 12-year sentence. Um, I might recommend that you get a protective or restraining order to keep him completely away from you. And that way, if you go out late, so you can, uh, you know, protect yourself. Because at this stage, I think you might need to protect yourself. According to the parole papers, according to the his parole officer, he's not supposed to be allowed to contact me, call me, write me, or anything. But I just got a letter in yesterday from him from the prison. So obviously, that's not they're not doing their job. Exactly. Because he shouldn't have that letter should have never got to me. Well, they. Are you part of that crime victims program that they have that will compensate you for, for your pain and suffering and will kind of uh, monitor his release and will notify you and all of that? Did you go ahead and go through with that? I did go through with it. That's what I'm saying. They are not doing their job. They're not I notifying see. me. I see. Of so they, they dropped the ball. They yes. dropped the ball. Yes. And I wonder nationwide how many cases like this where they drop the ball and something really bad ends up happening to the, to the woman, to the victim. And that's what I want you to protect yourself from and not let that. Don't, don't let yourself become his victim again. I won't. I, I do not I do plan on not doing it. I, he's got a criminal trespass against me and everything else. I mean, he can't even come around my house. I have to give his stuff to his dad or somebody else for him to even come get. Oh, that is great. That's so. great. Well, I'm glad you survived this. I'm very sorry that you had to go through it. I hope that he's getting, you know, some sort of justice, that he's getting some degree of what he deserves, uh, you know, out of this. And, and let's just hope that, that you have a very bright future that will eventually come in completely past this and it will just become a part of the past that one day you'll be able probably never to forget it but at least maybe it will be back there in the past and it won't haunt you on a daily basis as I'm certain it does now. Right, the m main thing that made me want to leave him and let me go ahead and say this is because my I have an oldest daughter and when I told her that he was putting his hands on me she tried to call me and when I would not answer my phone 